Thank you uh, very much, uh, Simon and, uh, and Minister Cash. Uh, you're always a hard act to follow, very passionate uh, in, um, in what you're doing, and I, I welcome you to South Australia. Lovely to have you here today. Um, Simon, lovely to have you, uh, your new home here uh, in, in South Australia. It was a, a, uh, and uh, we had a conversation last night. It was terrific to, to learn about some of the things you've been doing in your past. And, and a special welcome to David Coltman. Uh, there's a, a great story in the, um, in the advertiser this morning. Uh, TAFE, uh, for those that don't know, David is the new CEO of uh, TAFE SA here. Uh, and um, TAFE have announced uh, that they will be allowing their facilities to be available to the non-government sector to hire and also their curriculum uh, to be able to be sold to the non-government sector. This is a breakthrough in, um, uh, make, in, in allowing a, public, a valuable public asset to, to give the public the best possible value it can by um, opening up those assets uh, to um, the non-government sector. So we're very excited about that. We're excited about what that will do for uh, training opportunities here in South Australia. So the Marshall Government is proud to be partnering with the Morrison Government to ensure more South Australians are skilled and ready to take advantage of the wave of opportunity that's now arriving, particularly here in South Australia, with $90 billion of ships and submarines to build and many other spin-off industries uh, that are coming to South Australia because of that. And we're pursuing a strong growth agenda and an ambitious 3% gross state product uh, is, our, is our target. And as our state undergoes, econo uh, undergoes economic trans transition, we are rapidly diversifying into new and emerging industries, and Minister Cash has touched on some of these, so defence and space. We have the National Space Agency here in South Australia, digital technology, uh, data analytics. Uh, we, we now have um, uh, MIT, the uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, establishing here uh, in a partnership with the private sector. Cyber security, uh, health, uh, which is becoming much more complex, disability, much more complex, uh, and, of course, renewable energy. We will need skilled people for roles in these industries and they will need to be specialised um, skills in research, design, creativity and they need to have innovation. Of course, it's important that our training covers those areas as well. And based on modelling, and I know that um, uh, Minister Cash uh, touched on this earlier, but we have some South Australian statistics in this space. Uh, the Training and Skills Commission, which is our body here uh, that uh, um, guides the government uh, on its... Um, uh, on its training outcomes and its training um, priorities. Uh, 42, 42 of the predicted 50 top careers uh, with the highest growth potential in South Australia will actually require a vocational education pathway rather than a bachelor degree. And on top of that, according to a Skilling South Australia report, perceptions are not reality. Five years after completing their education, vocational education students uh, are 25% more likely to be working full time than somebody uh, who has um, uh, completed a, a bachelor degree. And on top of that, they'll be earning on average $2,000 a year more, uh, and of course, no hex debt. And I think that's a, that's a selling pitch that um, uh, we tend to forget to um, talk about when we talk about vocational education. And of course, with the rising importance of VET pathways, we must continue to promote and support the value of technical qualifications needed for modern skilled careers. Under Skilling South Australia, we are making steady progress, increasing apprenticeships and traineeship commencements above the record low levels we inherited from our predecessors. The South Australian Government is committed to a major investment of $100 million over four years uh, for skills development, and an additional funding has been secured with the Federal Government under the Skilling Australia Fund. And I thank the Minister for her enthusiasm and her cooperation uh, in securing that over the four-year period. It's a national partnership for vocational education and training. Payments under the national partnership are triggered by satisfying milestones and meeting performance benchmarks. And I'm pleased to report that South Australia secured 99% of the $20.3 million available to us in the 2018-19 uh, year through the national partnership. We delivered more than 10,000 commencements in apprenticeships and traineeships last year under the national partnership agreement. But there's much more work to do, as we heard from uh, Minister Cash earlier. Uh, there are perceptions that need to be changed. Uh, there are opportunities that uh, uh, need to be expressed. Uh, we're spending $1.6 million on a Skilled Careers Your Passion advertising campaign to lift the status of the apprenticeship 
training and training system and vocational education generally. It's changing community attitudes and it's driving commencements and apprenticeship uh, and training commencements already. Skilling South Australia is working closely with industry, including through the recently established industry skills councils. And, and again, Minister Cash touched on this in her presentation. Not long after being elected, we set up a series of round tables where we got industry together, uh, who we thought might have, have crossover skill sets, might have um, shared uh, interests in uh, developing skills in their area. Uh, and the outcome of those um, round tables were we delivered, uh, we set up eight industry skills councils. Um, and they're grouped uh, like this. We have one specifically for um, agribusiness. Uh, agri then we have defence, aerospace, IT and cyber security. Uh, we have creative industries, business and digital platforms are grouped together. Uh, then health, disability, aged care and community services, construction, mining and energy, uh, education and the service sector, then food, wine, tourism and hospitality, and then transport and manufacturing. So you can see uh, that they are industries that would be in, in a situation where there, there was a, a um, joint interest or a, a broader interest in um, making sure that uh, similar skill sets are developed for those industries. And uh, when we came to office, there were 350 subsidised uh, training courses. About 30% of those were available to the non-government sector. We now have expanded that to over 800 subsidised training courses and 90% of them are now available to the non-government sector. Uh, uh, there were a series of caps and other bureaucratic measures in place to control the spending uh, of those um, subsidised training courses. We have now um, decided that um, uh, we are removing those caps for any in business or any industry that is prepared to put their own money into training. So if, um, as an employer, you have signed a training, a contract of training and you're employing an apprentice or a trainee, you're paying their salary, we will back you by subsidising your off-the-job training through our subsidised training list. To us, that's the best measure of demand, is um, listening to the industry. And I think um, if we look at, um, you know, what are and what do you get with vocational education? Because it is industry-linked, um, it has a third partner. Uh, a university education, there are two partners. There's the student and the government. The student pays hex fees and the government subsidises those hex fees. Um, go into a bank, go into a, um, an accounting firm, a law firm, um, any other profession, and to point to a single employee that that business has had a stake in its training, and the answer is there is none. Go into any industry, and there are so many skills where the business has invested in that, in, in, in that employment. So vocational education um, gives you um, two tickets. Uh, the university degree gives you a ticket to an education, Vocational education gives you a ticket to an education and a job, because it is industry linked, it is linked to um, that industry demand. So it is a, um, a, 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 um, a tremendous start uh, to an exciting career. So through our um, Skilling South Australia program, we have designed bespoke uh, packages and bespoke programs with industry. We're taking advantage of the fact we are a small state and we are identifying through our industry skills councils what the barriers are for industries and even individual businesses and we're removing those barriers and uh, using the funding to bring enablers in for those um, businesses to uh, take on apprentices, many of them for the very first time uh, and that's a, a big win for um, industry and, and government. And there are uh, innovative projects that we have put together uh, for specific industries, uh, for example the rollout of the NDIS in South Australia is predicted to create 6,000 full-time equivalent jobs in the disability sector. Now, if that was to happen overnight, 6,000 people were employed in that sector overnight, just to give you an idea of how big that is, that is, that would take 1% of South Australia's unemployment figure. It is a massive figure. But of course, training in this sector has been in a, in a decline, uh, and of course, um, completions of training uh, have also been in decline. And so we've um, funded, um, projects co-designed with the disability sector and training providers to trial new pre-traineeships and traineeships where contracts of training, the industrial instrument, has been introduced for the very first time. So a 12-month traineeship uh, can be done while you're earning or 
learning an individual uh, support certificate three in that space. So you have a combination of off-the-job training, but most importantly, you have that key on-the-job training where you have a mentor, you have people working with you, you have people that are in the industry. So when you come across those real-life situations in aged care or health care um, that you need to deal with, you've got the um, advice you need, the experience you need from people that are already in that sector. We know that the traineeship and the apprenticeship model works very well in um, so many other industries, and yet in this industry, the pathway before uh, we started rolling this pilot out, the pathway uh, was through the classroom or online and then a six-week, uh, up to a six-week placement where you're not being paid uh, in a, a workplace. And of course, there's never the same commitment when you're in a workplace and you're not being paid. Um, when you're being paid, it's actually a much stronger commitment by the person that's participating in that, in that training and also a stronger commitment by the employer. We, and that's why training ships are so successful. So that'll be, that, that's rolling out here in South Australia in a pilot program. Um, we've also um, uh, designed um, a new tech industry pathways, such as a diploma in advanced technology and a cert for in cyber security. And both of these now are delivered through an apprenticeship. And this is, again, direct response from uh, the industry. They've said, look, yes, we get university graduates um, but we actually do want an additional pathway. We want a vocational pathway into our sector. So as, that, as they're learning, they're also getting an understanding of the culture of the industry and the culture of our business while they're in that learning phase. And we're seeing a lot of demand for apprenticeship and traineeship entry points in the new industries that are, are coming to South Australia. And in addition, uh, we're also investing in building the capability of uh, vocational education practitioners. This will inspire excellence and best practice in training, uh, educational leadership and assessment. We're currently reviewing the Training and Skills Development Act to modernise the training system here in South Australia. Uh, we want uh, a, a, an act uh, that will um, work today, but also work into the future. We want to future-proof it, we want to strip it back, and we don't want to stifle innovation in, um, in the delivery of vocational education, nor we want an act of parliament to get in the way of new industries that want to move into the space of vocational education. So we've gone out to consultation. We're now reviewing that consultation. We hope to have that act uh, or that bill in the parliament uh, in September for, um, uh, for debate. So in short, our state's ambitious growth agenda has skills at its heart. To achieve it, we are reshaping the training system we're making it easier for business to employ apprentices and trainees, and we're engaging with industry. And uh, I'm very pleased that um, Stephen Joyce uh, identified this in, in his report, how important it is to engage uh, in, uh, in industries, with industry. We're working with schools to reform uh, their VET programs. And this is important, this is extremely important. We have great bones for apprenticeships and traineeship systems here in South Australia, but when you, and in, in Australia in general, but when you compare the pathway from schools into vocational education in Australia with that in, um, say, best practice countries such as Germany, where it falls down is in that is at school. It's that, it's that movement from school into vocational education. So we, I'm very pleased that Education Minister John Gardner has announced a review in the VET in schools and the, um, in the VET process uh, in schools. I've already... Um, we're rolling out a new um, school-based apprenticeship, uh, called, what we're calling a flexible apprenticeship program, which is much more industry-focused, much, and it's a full-time apprenticeship system from year 12, where, where students will still um, get their high school certificate while they're completing their um, apprenticeship. But we're also, the VET review will look at uh, ways that we can get more industry engagement uh, in schools, and we can um, lift the status of the apprenticeship uh, and also reward schools and their principals for getting good vocational outcomes. At the moment, principals are rewarded for getting high school completions. They're not rewarded for getting vocational education outcomes. And human nature being human nature. Um, so we want to, um, again, bring vocational education pathways, give them equal status to university pathways uh, through that process. So we're, and we're removing um, barriers to employers and uh, we're, of course, investing in provider development. So 
you've got a big day ahead of you. Um, enjoy your time here in Adelaide. I'm very pleased uh, that you're here in Adelaide for the second time in 28 years. That means you probably owe us just my quick maths. You owe us two more uh, in Adelaide, and we're very pleased to have you ha have them here, Simon. And uh, please do um, uh, enjoy your your time here in Adelaide. Thank you very much.